Hi, I'm Tin Rui Chuang from the Institute of Information Science, Academia Sinica, Taiwan. In the preparation of this talk, I realized I can only focus on data and information rather than knowledge in general, so I need to change the title. I'm sorry about this. It's now titled Open Access to Data and Information During Public Health Emergencies. Let's begin by looking into three areas of focus. They are data, information, and the populations. In the current COVID-19 pandemics, we have seen collaborative efforts in producing public health data and information resources. For data, we will look into data integrations. Like we will look at example where data from different sources are aggregate and the process to um, extend so that the end results are readily usable. For information, we will look into information disseminations. That is, we will look at examples where useful information is distributed to the public and how people collaborate on that. Individuals in the population, for sure, are the basic units producing data and consuming information. We will identify several actors, especially nonprofits and the communities that are instrumental in data integration and the information dissemination. The three areas I link in a circular way. Of course, there are other areas that I link to and from the three areas. We now look at two examples in data integrations, our role in data and the GSET. GSET is the global initiate on sharing avian inference data. Our work in data provides tiny worldwide COVID-19 data sets that can be broken down by countries. It is supported by grants and has a long list of sponsors including donations from more than 4,000 individuals. Our raw data is a public work. It provides more than raw data sets. It is actually a data service. The GSET website accepts inference via sequence from around the world and it aggregates them together into data sets for scientific research. He has received 1.8 million SARS-CoV-2 genomics since early January last year. It was created as an alternative to the public domain model of sharing via secrets. There is a data access agreement where users must first agree to before they can start submitting via secrets to and using secrets from the database. This is more like a clock goods. Members do not need to pay but are bound by the agreement they sign up to. Our raw data and the GSET, in my view, are not typical commons as there is no clearly defined boundary for both the resources and the community around them. Free writing cannot be avoided and is not actually encouraged. Incentive, however, is an issue. These resources are financially sustained by actors who are external to the community around the data. We now look into the WHO and the Wikimedia cooperations in disseminating COVID-19 educational materials. We also tend lots of the distribution of this disease misinformation and intelligence on social media. The WHO Wikimedia collaborations make it easier to include WHO popular helps media files at the Wikimedia Commons, which is a digital library operated by the Wikimedia Foundation. Wikimedia's COVID-19 coverage, however, is still produced by volunteer editors. But they can now build on the materials of the two Wikimedia Commons by WHO. No collaborations between an intergovernmental organization and a nonprofit with full memberships is interesting in several ways. This cooperation should also be viewed in a context 
where Wikipedia is not accessible in China and several other countries. Taiwan is also excluded from participating in the WHO. However, Taiwanese editors are major contributors to the Chinese language Wikipedia. This highlights the current exclusions and the fragmentations in the global dissemination of information. We also need to remember information from the authority is not necessarily useful, but gossips on social media can be used for intelligence about disease outbreak. For example, the WHO on January 14, 2020, stated on Twitter that there was no clear evidence of human-to-human -human transmission of the coronavirus. Two weeks before that, on a popular BBS in Taiwan, however, someone warned about a suspect outbreak of coronavirus cluster infection in Wuhan. The authority, the disseminators, and the individuals are embedded in one another's information enterprise. It is the interaction among them that shapes the global reach of useful information. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the global population is the carrier of public health data and information. Each person is a reporting unit of disease data point. Without a virus, it's straight from individual there will be no G-set data base to study the disease. The COVID-19 data sets from our own data or come from the affected populations. If the public health data and the information is viewed as a global commons, we see that there are many pools of resources and there are many actors. The boundaries between the pool can be fuzzy as data can be repurposed and the information can be enriched. Instead, we look at the stewardship of data tools and the projects. Many, many of the tools are not profit-seeking entities. For data stewardship, we have examples from GSET, our own data, and the Wikimedia. There are also project tools that support tool development such as the Debian project, Linux Foundation, and the Software Freedom Conservancy. In addition, the public license stewardship, equity common, etc., make it easier for people to share data, code, and the contents. As nonprofits, the issues they face are mainly about governance and the sustainability. We now revisit Outstrom's design principle for common pool resources. The nature of data information is different from that of natural resources. Data and the information has no natural boundary, and its distribution cost is marginal zero. Ostrom's design principle number one refers to career defined boundaries. That is, quote, individual or Household who have the rights to withdraw resources units from the CPR must be clearly defined, as must be the boundary of the CPR itself. Unquote. In providing open access to popular health data and information, we see that they are mutually dependent actors. Several actors collaborate to maintain a pool of resources, and an actor may work on several pools. They are recursively related, so are the boundary between them. Ostrom's design principle number eight refers to nasty enterprise. That is, for CPRs that are part of larger system, quote, appropriations, provision, monitoring, enforcement, conflict resolutions, and the government's activities are organized in multiple layers of nasty enterprise, unquote. For popular health purpose, we can see that the population themselves produce the data and the useful information are derived from that data. Based on the derived information, the population take further actions. For us principles, it's nature to 
envision one CPR is nested in another one, as they are homogeneous in nature. In public health emergencies, instead, the three areas of data, information, and the populations are securely connected to one another. Together, they form circular enterprise. This concludes my presentation. Thank you.